This system uses the RCAS technology and is really the uh, culmination of the efforts of Ampatronic and Listen brought together as a partnership, delivering um, this technology to the market. And uh, it, it started with a common mission of delivering this solution, this high quality audio um, to allow us to hear better, allow everyone to hear better. And uh, so, Sam. Okay, so I'm from Ampatronic. We're um, a company based in the UK, and it came up earlier in the um, the luncheon group that um, Ampatronic and Listen are both part of uh, one organization called Olvida, and another member of the Olvida group is is Contacta, um, who some of you may be familiar with as a, a loop manufacturer. Ampatronic's also a loop manufacturer, and Listen Technologies have been developing receiver based assistive listening products for in excess of 20 years. All three of us being part of, of one group allows us to, to pull on the strengths as, of um, each other in certain applications. So Ampatronic have been working on um, Ori for going on eight years, and uh, we've done a fantastic job on the transmitter, but Listen Technologies has such a pedigree with their receivers that we decided to draw upon their experience and their um their expertise with the receiver-based technology so that uh, we could have a best-in-class uh, solution. Another example of the collaboration in the group is for this event, the loops provided are by both Ampatronic and Contactor, um, drawing on both companies' um, unique um, skills in different places. So um, across the entire group, really, we've got a mission to help people communicate and uh, get the right audio in the right location. So the first collaboration from um, Ampatronic and Listen was our Ori system. And so um, Ori is a Bluetooth um, broadcast system using the AuraCast um, features of Bluetooth Flow Energy Audio. And um, it's an entire ecosystem. So uh, we're going to go through the, um, the transmitter, the receiver, um, the docks, and why each of those elements is is important, but it's highly flexible to suit the environment that it's going into. So it could be that we want to have an open broadcast that anybody can connect to, like we have here, or it could be that we want to encrypt the signal so that somebody that we don't want to listen into the room isn't able to. Um, we can also have it so we can cover huge areas. This transmitter you can pick up right out in the corridor, um, or we can scale down the system so that we cover just a small meeting room. So it's really flexible to suit different environments and also some different applications. So it could be that it's being used for assistive listening in the environment we have here. It could be that it's being used to get audio from digital signage out in public spaces and could go into a variety of different environments that we'll touch on again uh, as we go through. So um, Tracy's going to um, take us through um, how the system works. Yeah. So um, as Sam mentioned, there are uh, there's basically four pieces to the system. You have a transmitter, you have the receiver, you have a charging dock that's used for con uh, charging and configuration of the receivers, and then you have some software that is used to manage and control uh, the entire system. So um, from a overall system, it's designed to be simple and flexible. You get an audio source. The inputs are designed to be really friendly to a number of, in, of um, different environments, different public spaces, what they've got. So a situation like this where you may feed from a console, it's easily connected to the transmitter. It can uh, take in microphones directly, and it can take in uh, networked audio. So if you have a large venue that, that transports audio across networks, the system can support all that. All that translates to is flexibility to go into a large number of public spaces, which is what we're targeting with the system. So once you have the transmitter, uh, the audio source to the transmitter, it takes that and uh, creates an ORCast broadcast, which is exactly what Chuck was talking about. It meets the standards, broadcasts to any number of receivers, from any different manufacturer that's, that's RCAS compatible. That receiver uh, then can uh, 
take that signal and produce audio from that, as long as it's AuraCast compatible. So we're going to dive into a little bit more of the, of the transmitter and how that, that works. So we, we mentioned the range. That's a common question that we get asked. How far will uh, the transmitter go? And, and we mentioned here that we can go in multiple rooms. We're, we designed the transmitter to be um, about equivalent to uh, what a typical RF assistive listening would be. There's going to be some, some uh, situations, depending on the environment, that may change that. But in general, um, you're talking about the same overall range. We, we, we use, it's designed to be the maximum power that is allowed in that band. Um, so typical assistive listening ranges we should see with this product. Um, also, there is two channels of audio. So that enables us to uh, have a, a variety of feeds. You say the same content um, in, both, in both channels, but one may be a different quality than the other, or one may be in a different language. So being able to, on a single transmitter, transmit one in uh, English and another in Spanish creates opportunities for these things to go into more and more venues um, and uh, have wider applications. So it looks like a Wi-Fi access point. We, and that's intended to do that. We want to make it easy for the venue to install this thing, something familiar with them, so that we get more of these things out there, that it's not a difficult situation for uh, a venue to make a decision to put this in, and then they can manage it the same way they, they manage other devices. So friendly for the venue, encourages more installations. Sure. So um, with the system, it's been designed so it can coexist with other technologies. And we've got an example shown here of a loop amplifier and a Ori transmitter. And it's not dissimilar to what we have in this room, actually. So in this room, we've got the audio going from this microphone and all the microphones we're wearing into the mixing console in the corner of the room. And then we have a feed coming out for the assistive listening. It's just one output from the desk. And that signal goes into the loop amplifier and then out of the loop amplifier into the Ori system. We could do it the other way around as well. So we go into Ori and then out into the loop, but they're coexisting with the same input to the system. So you should be getting the same experience regardless as to whether you're listening through the loop or through the Ori system in here. Um, and it's not that uncommon to see um, what we call hybrid systems in, in the real world at the moment as well. So um, loop is a fantastic technology. It's where Ampatronic comes from. But it does have some limitations. And um, we find in theaters, for instance, they might put a loop system in and also have an infrared system so that they can hand out receivers easily and also use multiple channels so they can do audio description for the blind, say, or um, have multiple languages available in the same space. And so um, we're expecting there to be plenty of applications where you have loop and Ori, or maybe have Ori and infrared a hybrid selection of different technologies in the same space. So on the receiver side, the second component of the, uh, of the system, uh, as Chuck mentioned, there's the assistant. In this situation, we've incorporated the assistant as part of the receiver. It's all one, uh, one device. And the idea is to make this a simple to use um, uh, device provided at, uh, at the venue. And the charging dock allows you to configure it in many different ways. So we have an example here where you're selecting um, the, the demonstration here that we're offering at the HLAA. You can select between multiple channels. But the system can be designed so that it automatically connects to channels to simplify the the, the process. Maybe if there's one or two transmitters, there is, um, uh, it only connects to those two broadcasts or three broadcasts that are, that are available and they, um, it may auto connect to them when they're in range. 
so that from a user's perspective, you pick up the device and it connects to the um, the transmitter in that venue and you go out of the room and you go to another area and it would connect to the other device. So that sort of functionality will be built into the receiver um, as we move forward. And receivers are important to provide, you know, it, it, we're at the beginning of this adoption of the technology and there's not a, uh, a lot of um, receivers out there, but there's more and more every day. And we start to see that that um, uh, accelerate as we move forward. But still, there's going to be uh, venues that uh, need to provide receivers to people uh, that don't have compatible or cast compatible devices. So it's important to have those. And it's still required by the ADA as well. So the additional, the receiver was designed to meet ADA requirements from being able to put a, um, a neck loop in it and drive a neck loop. It's integrated with, there's a neck loop lanyard supported with the device. Um, the volume levels, the, you know, all the aspects of the, um, the receiver is designed to be flexible to support a wide variety of hearing applications. And I didn't mention this on the transmitter, but um, in the transmitter, we it was targeted for assistive listening devices, so we have automatic level control that um, equalizes levels so that talkers appear at the same language, even if I'm talking more quiet than someone else. And I naturally tend to talk. Um, so that's incorporated in some... Uh, Filtering to to optimize for intelligibility is all part of the RE system. And there's a number of accessories that are associated with the receiver that can be pro provided by the venue. They, it supports, uh, as we mentioned, neck loops, uh, a variety of, of headsets, um, and even devices that you bring your own as long as they're compatible with a, a three and a half millimeter jack. And... As time goes on, compatibility will increase with um, a large number of AuraCast receivers that reach the market, ear, including earbuds. As Chuck was talking about, you're going to be able to use um, uh, earbuds and other hearing devices coming into the venues with the RE system, all compatible, all being able to improve hearing to... Um, the participants in the in the venue. Some of the applications that we see for for AuraCast and an Ori um, include education. So um, for a long time, education has been one of the the primary markets for us in assistive listening, and we don't see that changing at all. Um, in actual fact, um, when introducing Ori, we've been talking to some of the universities globally who might not have even implemented assistive listening at this point who are now all of a sudden looking, okay, we can cover all of our spaces very quickly um, and, and implement this new technology um, at a speed that they couldn't with other uh, solutions. So education is one that we definitely see as a, a good application for, for AuraCast. Um, corporate, so corporate boardrooms, um, as well as meeting room spaces, um, and government facilities um, we see as, as good applications for for AuraCast. Um, the other week, one of my colleagues had a, a meeting with a, a UK uh, government agency, and um, they were looking at equipping 600 spaces with assistive listening. Um, again, they didn't have a provision at all um, prior to um, deciding to, to implement a, a solution. They were looking at Loop to begin with, and they are still looking at Loop alongside Ori, so that they've got the ability to interface with both current hearing aid users and people that get the new devices as they become available to the market. Houses of Worship, um, again, a, a traditional application for us with assistive listening. And um, we've seen a, a great amount of interest from um, Houses of Worship, which tend to be quite challenging acoustic environments for, for everybody. So um, both those that have taken the step to get hearing aids and people that might not have taken that step but want to benefit from a direct feed can um, make use of an AuraCast system in that environment. And then finally, entertainment. Um, so 
earlier, uh, Thomas Telfin was talking about his experience with music festivals. Um, thankfully, um, quite a few music festivals are now implementing assistive listening, but it tends to be restricted to a small area of the of the festival. So uh, typically, it's the access platform at the at the back of the uh, of the field next to where the mixing console is. Well, using Gory, we can quickly cover an entire festival site. Um, with just a couple of transmitters. So somebody can walk around the entire site and get access to a direct feed from the console. So it's bringing um, more people access to, um, to good quality audio in those types of environments. When it comes to compliance, um, we have um, a few different um, components of our system. So we've got the transmitter and importantly, the receivers. So from an ADA point of view, even when this is direct to hearing aid and everybody's carrying their own hearing aids, there'll still be a requirement for receivers that can be provided to end users following the current ADA guidance. Again, we've got the neck loops available and um, signage is, is always key with any assistive listening system. Um, something that I would add here though is that we're also compliant with the Bluetooth standard. And, um, and Chuck made a comment in a previous session about the Bluetooth uh, technology always being updated. There's there's always um, additional patches coming in and we want to ensure we've got compatibility going forward. So all of the devices that we have are network connected, um, meaning that the receivers can sit in a, a, the charging dock and receive updates with the latest Bluetooth stack as can the transmitter so that we're compliant with everybody's devices going forward and it's not just a snapshot of the devices that are available on the market today at time of launch. So um, there's, Oracast is an additional technology that's available um, for assistive listening, um, but every technology we believe still has its place. Um, and so um, hearing loop in particular is very good in transient environments. And we really need to see a large number of users with their own devices to see the same kind of benefits as hearing loop in those transient environments. It's a matter of when, not if. So when the end users come uh, and have the, the receiving devices, we see Auracast as a good application. Um, but a counter loop, for instance, we're not saying that Auracast replaces counter loops today um, because it's uh, somewhat a complex issue to, to try and solve that. Um, RF could still be useful in um, large spaces where we're looking to cover an entire um, bowl of a stadium. We might want to look at an RF solution there um, so that we get the, the coverage. Although again, we'll get there with Auracast as we get more experience of the systems in the field. Um, IR is a very secure technology. You need to have line of sight to be able to receive it. So if we're looking at um, doing courtrooms, for instance, we want to know that when we shut the door, nobody outside can hear into the courtroom. Ori, being a uh, broadcast, could be picked up outside, although we can issue encryption keys to secure it down. Um, but there's pros and cons to, to all of the different technologies out there. Audio over Wi-Fi is another one that, if you're looking at high channel counts, could be that that makes sense as a technology for you. Um, there's no one-fits-all solution today. Right. But yeah. And as the systems evolve and our cast evolves, we're going to see more and more overlap as these, as um, we move forward and, and new innovations that help take care of those, those cases that we talked about, such as counter loops and, um, and uh, adoption in those areas. And that's one of the great things about our cast and, the uh, the path moving forward is it's really a great foundation that as manufacturers, you can build solutions that um, can solve problems that everyone here and in the rest of the country in improving hearing overall. 